Hello my soccer universe, a little bit late, but hey, 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 uh, better late than never, I always say. So yeah, we are gonna review the uh, first legs of the Champions League quarterfinals and to quote a French journalist that I'm listening quite a lot to as of late, Karim the Dream, I think that's the big story. That's the one story and you saw it in the highlights. I don't think it it has been a long time that it has been a long time if ever that there was a player in the knocker stage scoring two consecutive hat tricks and not against some limp uh, opposition but first against PSG in very very short time and uh, and yesterday at Chelsea he probably should have had four uh, to be fair but you know uh, really 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 impressive stuff and while there were nice storylines in all the other games as well or well, not so nice depending on how you like your soccer but uh, Real Madrid just going to Chelsea and bossing them around and you know after the disappointment that they had in the Clasico coming out with such a performance where uh, they really dominated Chelsea that was rather a sight to behold I must say so uh, a big Props to, to, to them. Um, I think the, the second biggest error also was happening. I mean, uh, to be honest, the uh, Tuesday games, which I didn't watch live, but I, I, I watched uh, then um, the next morning, uh, were not all that exciting. I mean, there was uh, one at least featured soccer. The other one was uh, Guardiola against super defensive struggle with a 5-5-0. What do you want? I thought it was intriguing, but I told I told them it was not exciting one bit. I would say I've already mentioned so much. Uh, let's go into those those games and we'll start, of course, in Manchester. Um, probably the, uh, it, it was the, the game I was second most looking forward to, maybe because I really want, want to see what, what will Simeone do against Manchester City. Well, he played small team and really five defensive lines and keeping it tight now um i'm of two ways about this no it with this talented squad you don't need to go to as negative tactics as you went there on the other side i mean how else do you want to stop Man manchester city uh he knows his team is not skilled enough to uh, beat manchester city but uh in the few short moments i mean it is it, it, in first it was almost uh hilarious at, at points but atleti had the ball but they were so far back that they were passing around their own box and the manchester city could have uh gained the possession very very high up the pitch but could not find through because there was no space so it was always going, 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 going to be Will uh, Atleti being able to hold down or hold out for this draw or uh, will Manchester uh, City break through? Well, in the end, they broke through uh, because Phil Foden played a brilliant pass uh, into De Bruyne and there were very two quick forward passes. And, you know, uh, maybe I, I don't want to say Atleti's defender were caught out of possession. It was just uh, it just worked out perfectly for them. Let's put it that way. And uh, that was the winning goal. Potentially, De Bruyne should have had a second one a little bit later on, but there was also a counter where Dr Griezmann was, I mean, uh, that was the only real action that he had offensively, where he was running, 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 but then uh, misplaced a ball completely. So, I mean, off the offensive output for Atletico Madrid was rather meager. Defensive, this was as maxed up as can be, and also the old Atleti with all their, um, you know, not so nice moves were back. I mean, the way they hacked at... Grealish or put the ball on him. Uh, they really, I think they wanted uh, to really rile him up and get him sent off in many ways. Yeah, it was not the prettiest of games. Uh, the other game, Benfica Liverpool, also was not necessarily the period that the priest because I think Benfica got the tactics a little, a little bit wrong. Uh, at least it didn't go defensive, but to, to be honest, playing the 4 4 2 instead of um, 4 2 3 1 played very much in the cards of Liverpool who were just uh, cu cutting and slicing through Benfica on many many occasions it took them actually until the 17th I mean they had all the all the possession were passing left and right but the breakthrough came through a corner kick from Robertson the corner uh, had, 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 had in after I think Salah already had had one if not two big chances before that yes Benfica due to the offensive uh, ways also found some chances but it was rather rather minor it was always more Liverpool uh, going forward than it was ever going to be Benfica and then uh, Luis Diaz with a really 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 nice pass 
uh, uh, to uh, Sadio Mane uh, third, third, fourth minutes, two nil. Liverpool probably could have doubled that lead by the halftime. They were so much better than Benfica. However, something happened at halftime, and suddenly uh, when Dar Darwinson Nunez, Darwin, Dar Darwinson, Darwin Nunez uh, pulls one back, suddenly there was some nervousness. And actually, you could feel that maybe if Benfica just gets lucky again, like they were on a, a, a middle against Ajax, they might actually snatch a draw there. And it got really, really touchy. And, um, you know, Konate, while he has scored a goal, he seemed very, very um, not suited for this game. Very, very out of it in many, many, in many, many ways. Um, I actually found the change at the change around the 60th in interest with Firmino and uh, for, for Mane. Henderson for Thiago and Diogo Jota for Mohamed Salah. Um, kind of, you know, let's say for big guys, because of course, I didn't, uh, since I didn't make a Premier League review, we have the big clash coming up uh, on Sunday. So it was all about conserving your energy, and Liverpool did their damnedest to do so. So uh, Salah, uh, Thiago, and Mane came, uh, came, came, came off. And um, so it remained a little bit open. Uh, but then Liverpool got the third, third goal. I think there was one scene where uh, Alisson was dribbling uh, past the defense, uh, past an attacker. Where yeah, if that goal goes wrong, it's probably two two. But then Luis Diaz uh, after a really good Keita assist, not offside, and then uh, makes it three one. Liverpool throw uh, highest chance of making the semis with ninety eight percent. That was two two weeks ago. Manchester City with the lead is already at almost 77% advancing to the next round. As I said, it was all about the Wednesday games in many ways. And Chelsea Real Madrid was the game of the, of the, of the round. A game of two heavyweights in European football. Yes, um, yes, I call Chelsea meanwhile a heavyweight. But where Real Madrid completely showed again that they have a special mojo in the Champions League. Uh, the way they could away, I mean, Chelsea wanted one way to, um, you know, press pressure and get physical with them. But the way Real Madrid could pass themselves out of trouble was really, really astonishing. The way they had that they could, and the way uh, they stayed mo mobile, the Casemiro, the Crosses, the Modric, uh, Chelsea couldn't get a grip on it. Real Madrid had brilliant tactics, played brilliantly that game, and then they had, uh, with Benzema, of course, uh, a strike and top form up front. I mean, uh, the first one he initiates with a one-two with Vinicius Junior Junior, who, 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 play, who play, uh, puts it back, and then a header from far out, getting so much um, strength on on, on the header that it's one, one, it was an absolutely amazing opener. But it got even better because a really great Modric cross is met by a header where he's falling back and still can, can, can place it. Within three minutes, they had undone Chelsea and it was fully deserved at that, that moment. However, then they started to hang back a little bit and that, with an equally nice chip assist, allowed Havertz to head it back home for 1-2. Three brilliant headers. But I will still will say Havertz is number three, the first goal is number two and uh, no, number one. That second goal, I mean, what a brilliant header that was. Showed all the awareness. Benzema himself should have had before the half a hat trick. Though. Uh, that he missed that one. Kind of put a little bit of damper on his, his performance. But uh, this man is absolutely on fire at the moment. Uh, the way he already turned things around against PSG. And now another uh, hat trick because right after the half, he, he completes his hat trick. Where uh, you know <laughs> Chelsea had some momentum going for 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 themselves. Come out of the half, bring on Kovacic, bring on Ziyech for, uh, and then Rüdiger and especially Mal Monty are not uh, still in in the locker room in a way. I mean, many play a horrible pass back to Rüdiger, who then uh, kind of half-heartedly uh, steps in into it so so that uh, Benzema can get the ball. Roll it into the end. The end at that point, yeah, game done. Chelsea really tried, really tried, but uh, really couldn't break down uh, uh, Real Madrid. Yes, there was uh, were two headers from Lukaku, and I have to say one free header. Yep, and Lukaku in good form buries that one. Nope, not this Lukaku at the moment. Uh, it was glaring me. You saw 
the great striker that Chelsea brought. You had the great striker that Real Madrid almost rediscovered, one has to say. And the different outcomes there. One is full of confidence, the other one is lacking it. And so Real Madrid go with a 3-1 lead back to the Bernabeu. I mean, thanks to away goals not being a thing anymore, it might not be um, as huge of a lead as it used to be. But it's still a very, very, very comfortable lead going, going, going there. And, and at, at, at the moment, they are uh, slightly above 95% of advancing in this one. Uh, although Tuchel seems to me said he already had, had had given up on that one because if Chelsea continue playing like that, yeah, that's true. Chelsea continue playing like that. But, you know, it's only a few days away and maybe you can dig in once so, so some more. But I think, you know, when the draw was made that I, that I said that this was the match, the match between fourth and fifth and I didn't know which was fourth and which, which was the fifth best team in the comp, 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 comp competition. I would say... One of these, Real Madrid, is probably the third best in the competition at, 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 at the moment, Chelsea. Probably of the teams left, fifth or sixth, the way it went. But, you know, it clearly went that Real Madrid is, at least after the first leg, the better team than Chelsea. And then what Villarreal against Bayern Munich, I mean, what a stunner that that was. I mean, uh, Bayern Munich was not really on the pitch. They had loads of possession. But what this Wiley Fox... Um, you know, Emery uh, dream, dreamed of tech, um, uh, as a package, as a package, as a tactic. <laughs> I always, it's all about packages for me and jerseys coming. Uh, was I, I actually running right Yes, it was defensive, but it had also punch going forward. And that paid off immediately when in the eighth minute, uh, Pareko plays over to Dan, 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 Dan Yuma. I think even Gerard Moreno in, in the build-up make, makes it 1-0. And they were always, well... Um, Bayern Munich had loads of possession. It was almost like handball. They played around the uh, the six yard uh, the uh, the box, the ten yard box, fifteen yard box, whatever. Uh, I'm not good with those uh, English measurements. In any case, uh, they never could get in. I think they in the first half they didn't have a shot on goal for crying out loud. However, on the other side, uh, Villarreal almost scored the two 0 It was just for a fraction of offside. Where a Coquelin cross kind of fell over and went behind Naya. Yeah, it should have been two to two to just uh, um, <laughs> punish them. In the second half, yes, Bayern got a little bit more danger, danger, dangerous, but not rather convincing. And to be honest, VRL should have made it a 2 nil. I think it was all in there, namely laid on Gerard Moreno. Gets the ball from Neuer on mid midfield, empty net, and he immediately takes takes a shot, probably the right thing, but it takes such a spin that from being uh, towards the left side of, of the post, it just goes out and goes wide. But there were other really good chances. VRL should have won, won, won the one. I mean, it's still uh, tightly contested. At the moment, as I said, uh, we are 54.5% advancing, um, which would be a stunner, to be honest. But uh, Bayern at home in the Allianz Arena might be a different story. On the other side, I don't uh, really think there will be a repeat of the Salzburg game. Salzburg was a little bit naive. This Una Emery can dream up tactics like with the best of them. And remember, they had a similar situation ahead of Juventus. And uh, yeah, Bayern is better than Juventus. I would give you that for sure. But it was a highly, highly interesting game in many ways and one that said very competitive and i always thought that bayern in their typical manner will probably snatch uh equalizer no they didn't they absolutely didn't and it was uh i think they should have ended two nil for VRL. and then i think bayern are in really 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 deep deep trouble so they're still set to move on uh with a date with liverpool but uh if bayern play this way there is no chance in the world that they will make it past liverpool that much i can tell you already so the second legs will be next week. Uh, we have uh, first Bayern against Villarreal and Real Madrid Chelsea. And then Atleti against Manchester City. Atleti actually will need to do something. Although I still think they will probably keep it tight for 60 minutes. Hope for a nil-nil and then come forward. And yeah, Liverpool can play the reserves against Benfica and probably still at once. So what do you think about the games uh, this midweek? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!